Welcome back everybody. In the last tutorial, we finished pretty much most of the basic coloring. And so in this tutorial, we're going to go kind of quick. Uh, we're going to be basically adding on our values and then we're going to do a little something different by adding on some pictures textures uh, on everything. So with this tutorial, you're going to notice that everything is still separated. I have not united the colors. So if you did want to come back through, if you like the idea of colored lines, this would be a kind of a great little tutorial. Uh, to actually do that with just be aware of the order as you are coloring your lines All right, so let's get right into it. I am going to duplicate out my flat color And I'm just gonna call this shadows you can call it drop shadows cast shadows anything like that and You will notice that it is above the flat color layer now if you need to ungroup everything if you need to expand the live paint bucket now would be a good time to do that you might have to ungroup a couple times we are going to be using our knife tool now the little trick with the knife tool just be aware that you are going all the way through the lines and then also you will have to kind of ignore the strokes so I'm just ungrouping until I can select the color I want and I'm just going to come back through and then select my value so let's select the ear what I'm doing is just uniting big shapes. So you might see that, especially if you are, if you did all of our coloring early, you're gonna notice that there might be some separations within the colors, so you might have to come back through, unite some of those shapes. So just kind of pay attention to that, especially on that flat color layer. But it's going to be real, real simple. And just so you can kind of see the, the process here, we're going to select the color first. I'm going to come back through with the knife tool. You're going to notice that the edges go all the way through that red line. And it should smooth out for you. But it, I usually would go a little bit slower. And that'll keep it nice and slow. Keep in mind, you can always come back through and edit those lines. So if it's not as perfect as you want, just be aware that you can always come back through, modify those. At the end of this one, we'll actually delete out some of those flat colors, and it's a lot easier to modify those shapes. So if you wanted to unite any of your values, if you wanted to modify any of those lines, you'd always able to do that. Now I'm gonna be coloring them as we go. I'm gonna select both of those and unite those. You will see some little ghostly lines here and there using the knife tool. So if you don't like that, definitely select multiple shapes that hit together and then just unite those and then they'll actually uh, work a little bit nicer for you. Now I do want the stitches to be a different color. Now in the final you'll notice that it's black but this again you can be using the magic wand tool select everything. I'm going to unite all of the stitches so I can basically color them uh, individually. And then I'm going to color that a different one just so it pops out. All right, let's go back to our shadow layer. We're going to basically do that same process with the other stitches. But you're going to notice in that upper shoulder, we're going to unite those two just so it's the exact same. And again, that's just so there, if there's any ghostly little lines, you can get rid of those. Nice and smooth. I'm just going to color those right now. Those will basically be in the, sh the the shadow areas, so I want those a little bit lighter. And again, I'm going to switch those back to black. All right, let's select that. Notice that little foot. I want to unite those two so it's the exact same shape. Same thing on the right leg. All right, let's use the knife. Let's do the armpit first. And then I do want that bottom one as well. And really up to you if you guys like the idea of smaller chunks, 
rather than big chunks, I usually think that the knife tool is a little bit harder to, to control, especially with the, uh, the longer the areas. So just kind of be aware of that as you are using your strokes. That's gonna be that color. Let's flip this over. Notice that each value or each base color has a value specific to that color. So you can do white, you can do black, and then just do transparency. That is another easy way of doing it as well. I'm just uniting those two shapes. And I want a little value coming on the side of the cheek there. And just be aware, and again, just if you needed to hide the strokes just so you can see the, the lines on your flat color a little bit more, I would recommend that. Since they don't exist on the, the color layer. All right, let's color that leg. Just seeing anything else. So again, white arrow, and then I can always modify the shape. Now things just to be aware of is the flat color layer is still there. So you might have to arrange the colors if you do wanna keep that flat color layer or just basically delete it. So in the next step, we'll actually delete out all of the flat color. Since we already have it on the layer below. All right, where I'm just unifying, unifying shapes, adding some other values here. So I want a value on the mouth and then I'm also gonna do a drop shadow from that so that's if i was if it was an actual teddy bear it'd be sticking out of the mouth a little bit or it'd be protruding so i do want to have that popping out a little bit more keep in mind we didn't do stitches on some of those other seams you are more than welcome to add those if you think that's a cool look if you want to rip his eyeballs off or give him more button eyes you want to kind of repeat the uh the stitches for eyeballs that would be kind of a, a creepier look too All right, I think we are getting close to being done here. So the next step is we are gonna be basically getting rid of the flat colors on our shadow layer. And that's just so where it's not getting confused. Keep in mind it's already there. And then we're gonna to start to add in our patterns. All right, let's just do that drop shadow a little bit. Go through that line. Now, some of you might be able to see the stroke on the seam. All we have to do is grab that black, and we're gonna probably do that in the next step here, is grab this black line, and then just kind of change the order a little bit. Since those seams are on the ink layer, we just have to rearrange the order. So at this point, let's go through, let's delete out some of these flat colors just so you can see them. Let's do the magic wand. I would drop the tolerance down to around 15 and then basically just the flat color. So all of the value layers that we added, that is what I'm looking to grab. And then basically just delete out. So we're kind of left with these little uh, little chunks. Now anything that is going to be left, that's where we want to start to add in our patterns. So I don't need anything on the mouth, I don't need the tongue. I just want the, kind of the values. All 
All right, I think we look good. Now I'm gonna just add on another aspect of the heart. So I want the front to be a little bit lighter. That's just personal preference. You mind if you don't like the heart, make it an oval, you can do whatever you want with that. That's not a big deal. Okay, so at this point, we have our ink lines on one layer. This is where I'm gonna arrange, bring the front, and I'm that's just so that seam goes behind the black line. Okay, I think we can start having some fun. So right now I'm still on the shadow layer and I'm actually going to duplicate it out and I'm gonna call it pattern. Now reason for that is when we add on the pattern, there's really not a fill. So we'll be adding on a, uh, what we're looking to do is basically maintain the same shadow shapes and then I add a little tiny bit of a texture to it. All right, so let's pull out our swatches. We can get rid of our magic wand. Now there's a little drop down, drop down to patterns, basic, and we are gonna be looking for graphic textures. I think I have a, a US land intruder, something like that, but it's basically gonna be some very fine little lines. And what I'm looking to do is double click so I get my pattern options. And what I can actually do is just double click. And now what we're able to do is right now the default is black. What I'm looking to do is modify the strokes and you're, it's just going to be coloring them normally. And so when we add this over our texture or, or as the texture is added over our value, we can actually see it. So there's two different ways you can do it. I'm going to go lighter with the pattern compared to the shadow that's below it, just so everyone is aware. And then I am just going to save. And so three things that we're going to be adding. We're going to be doing a cream colored one. We're going to be doing the blue for the hearts. And then we are also going to be doing the kind of the base color for the teddy bear. So just be aware that all of these shadows are darker. So I want all of my strokes to be pretty much one value lighter. And again, if you wanted it to be darker or if you wanted it to stay black, you'd be able to do that too. So if you just wanted to kind of add it so you can see it first. So all I'm doing right now is just saving three versions, modifying the stroke color. And then I'm going to say done. So I can just basically grab all of the shadows for the base. I'm still on that pattern layer. I'm just holding down shift. And you're going to notice in our swatches that they're hanging out so you can actually see them. I'm just selecting that face color. Same thing with the blues. Now, if we hid the layer, you're gonna notice that it's the, the background is still transparent on that pattern. So just so you guys can kind of tell what's going on with the, the values there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I think this is a little, little much. So I'm gonna drop the transparency down. Right around 50. Eh, let's drop it down to 40. Oh, let's even go more subtle. Now, again, if you guys don't want to add in the texture and or if you want texture over everything, you would do the exact same thing with the flat colors. And that could be a good way of doing it. So you, what you could actually do is have a texture or the pattern going over all of the flat color. Keep in mind, I would also duplicate the flat color layer. And then I could have a transparent shadow layer. So then it could be a little bit more subtle there. All right, let's do a new layer. Let's just do a real basic shape. 
I'm just going to do a circle. I am going to color this one our blue color. Let's duplicate that. So control C, paste in front. So you only have two of them at this point in time. Okay, so you have two. Let's just use our nice simple knife tool. And what I'm looking for is the shadow to be closer to the bear. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically copy and then paste in front. And then I'm going to add on that texture. Just so you guys can kind of tell what's up. All right, I think we're good. Safe check. So again, we are hanging out. We are doing Illustrator tutorials. I am gonna be adding on some new playlist this year for whiteboard animations uh, we're going to do some faster adobe tutorials coming up here shortly uh, but if you like them definitely subscribe definitely share uh, i am taking requests right now so if you guys have if you are completing these and you have any cartoons that you would like to see uh, definitely leave those in the comments i try and read all of those and again always thank you for staying positive within the comments uh, for my students so i do appreciate that thanks guys i will see you on the next tutorial